everybody is Dr. Rick dropping in on you. I hope that everybody is having a great uh, week up until this point. Uh, look, I'm going to get right down to it. You guys know the routine. If you uh, like what you see and hear on this channel, click the like button, click the share button, and subscribe. If you believe in the work that we do here at the Black Voice and the Odyssey Project, uh, the work we've done for now 30 years plus, Show some love and support us. Uh, regardless, we are about to jump into this. Look, uh, I told you guys when I started this uh, nearly 14 years ago online that I did not come here to be an influencer, and uh, to be a celebrity, to be liked, to be popular. I came to deliver the truth. I came to... Uh, offer solutions. I came to present uh, on my back the studies and research that I've conducted over the years uh, as it pertains to the enigmatic issues we face in the black community. Uh, I am not here uh, to make people feel good. I'm here to wake people up to the challenges that we are facing and to offer some uh, contributions in the way of solutions. And so when I address something, I address it with that in mind. I'm not here to cause harm or be mean to anybody either, though. I'm not here to be nasty, and I've tried to be as caring but yet direct as I can in my delivery. I am very uh, protective of our women because I think that they have been left unprotected. Uh, for far too long, but at the same time, I am very uh, engaged and in alignment with our men because we are the most marginalized and uh, targeted individuals on the planet. And somehow we have found our way into a gender war that was stirred and orchestrated by the powers that be to keep us at odds with one another to the point that we get to argue over things like who's the catch and who's the prize uh this is going th th this conversations and these arguments are going on you know who's the catch who's the prize or is it a 50 50 thing or is he paying all the bills and all these different things while we are discussing this and having all of these discussions and going in on people who are married uh, and seem to be enjoying their marriage and enjoying one another and loving on one another uh, to take up fights in their marriage that they haven't taken up. Uh, we are dealing with Jonathan Owens and Simone Biles uh, based off of an interview that was done that she happened to be present at and did not take offense to and thought it was kind of funny. Um, and the, the crazy thing is first there was concern for Simone by these people who are going in on Jonathan Owens. There was concern about Simone. And when Simone came back and said, Hey, I'm good. My marriage is strong. Then the vitriol turned on her. She became stupid. She came, became silly. She became low, uh, a person of low self-esteem. And what gets me is, and I'm going to get to uh, my real reason for being here. Uh, but 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 what gets me is this guy spent the vast majority of this interview talking about uh, the influence she has had on his life, how she spoke life into him, how they both uh, needed healing from traumas that stem back into their childhoods and they got that 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 counseling together they got that therapy together they did their work as a unit and you got to understand um when they met he hadn't yet gone pro he was still in college um so it gives it an even more unique dynamic because she saw something in him obviously not just, you know, being a professional athlete because he wasn't one yet, even though uh, he, had, you know, he definitely had the potential. And she was a decorated uh, superstar in her field. 
Uh, everybody's jumping on the fact that he said he didn't know who she was. And it tells me that you really don't understand the dynamics, number one, of men, number two, of sports. Um, it's hard to believe because I'm a huge fan of hers. Uh, I've been a huge fan of hers since her first run. Uh, but what you got to understand is, unlike football and basketball in America, where the two most popular sports where you can name 22 players on the team, the average person can't name 10 gymnasts worldwide. The average person doesn't watch gymnastics except for once every four years and then alternate years for the world championships or what little video surfaces of some college gymnastic uh, event where somebody does something spectacular or does a great routine. Uh, so if I'm not checking for it, I'll see somebody and I mean, that, that picture's popping up a lot. But if I really am not into the sport, I'll bypass it. And I haven't bypassed her. I know who she is and most of the people in the world know who she is, but it's not without, uh, what am I saying? It's not impossible that a young kid that's not into gymnastics can pass by a commercial on gymnastics. Because if he's not checking for gymnastics, he's not seeing her compete. And if he's not checking for her and seeing her compete, the only time that you're going to actually see a big dose of her is doing world championships and Olympics. And if he's not checking for that, he'll go right past it and go to what he's looking for. What the, What's happening in basketball? What's happening in track and field? Uh, I can't tell you who the uh, prolific um, fencer is uh, in the fencing category or taekwondo because I haven't been keeping up with that. And it's possible that that's the case with, with her. We know women are going to know who she is because she represented so much for our black sisters. She was celebrated so much because of that. And if you follow gymnastics, which I followed long before Simone came along, all the way back to Mary Lou Retton in 1984. Uh, and a little bit before that, you know, Nami, uh, Nadia Kamenichi uh, out of Romania, uh, I believe that was 76. Uh, I mean, you know, so all the way back to my childhood, I've just you know, love gymnastics. So I, I'm aware of uh, some of the people who com uh, competed. So it's a little different for me. Um, but at the same time, uh, whether he knew who she was or not, he says he didn't know. Um, what he did admit is that she's special to him and that he loves her. And I watched the way he handles her. Now, gr granted, it's a snapshot. But nothing of her in her continence tells me she's being mistreated. So we're going from a woman that looks like she's being treated well, looks like she's in a, an extremely happy place. He looks like he's in an extremely happy place. And because he said he was the catch, all hell is falling apart. Now, here's the problem I have with this. Have your opinions. They, you know, that's the beautiful thing about being in America. You have a right to have an opinion. You have a right to feel a certain way. My problem is when we put so much energy into how we feel about things that really have no true bearing and what's going to change in our lives. When we give so much energy to people who have already created their lives, people who are living at a better level than we're living in our lives, whether they're black or white, uh, it, 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 it speaks to our detachment from reality and the inability for us to really confront the things that are the true um, obstacles and barriers in our lives and in our communities and in our homes. We are looking at a situation that in 1960, 75% of young black, uh, black children who were born were born into uh, two-parent households. We are now at a place where that has completely flipped, where 75% of black children are born into single-parent households, meaning that not only are their parents not married, they're not living in the same house. That's a problem. Uh, there has been a slight improvement over the last several years, but it is small in the grand scheme of things, and there's so many things that come out of that that we haven't confronted. I've been telling you and talking to you about a lot of this stuff. We're dealing with a situation where in the last six years, uh, black male suicide uh, between, uh, for me, black males between the ages of 14 and 24 has spiked 49% in that period of time. That's 49% increase in 
successful suicides. Uh, during the same time, our young black girls ages 5 to 13 have uh, become the number one statistic holding the number one spot in successful suicides. Yes, babies 5 to 13. There's a real problem here. Um, I reported, what, 2015, 2016 about uh, some studies that were being released about the dangers of uh, Instagram specifically as it pertains to young teenage girls and uh, uh, pre preteens and teenage girls uh, in the area of depression and suicide. And um, very little was said about it. We are at the bottom of the socioeconomic ladder. We are struggling uh, in so many different ways. We have a widening wealth gap. We have a problem uh, with properly and effectively educating our youth, preparing them and empowering them to go out into a world that's inherently hostile towards them compete and win but yet we are arguing about who's the catch uh, man, one of the things i think that we need to understand is that first and foremost every person should think highly of themselves and every person should feel that they are the prize for their mate and their mate should simultaneously feel the same way about themselves and feel that they are the prize this idea that i've got to compete with the person that i love for who's most important in the relationship is why so many relationships are falling apart. Everybody's caught up in what they are getting instead of who they are in the relationship and what they are providing. And I think that uh, we are losing in that category. We are focused on superficial things that other people have suggested are important but have no real true intrinsic value in the grand scheme of things. Now, what does that mean? That means that while we're arguing about who pays the bills, while we're arguing about, and I'm not saying a man isn't supposed to be a provider. That's not what I'm talking about. A man is, but before a man is a provider, he's also a protector. But when you commodify him and you make him only about a paycheck, you miss the greatest part of who he is. His instinctive nature is to make sure you're safe, you're secure, that you're covered, that you're protected. And the whole idea about I want a man, but I don't need a man, you're missing again the very essence of who he is. He needs to be needed more than he needs to be wanted because it's in that needed being needed his identity and his place and his and in, in, in him being that he needs respect more than he needs to be loved it's a dynamic we need to understand men we need to understand that our women can never truly be what we want them to be this peace we keep demanding can never be true until we provide an environment in which they can be who they are designed to be and in that very nature provide us the peace and respect that we so desperately need in our home. I, I understand what it means and what it feels like to come home to a home, house that you provide where it doesn't feel like a home. Well, that has to have some of your stamp on it. What you've got to do is be willing to know what is necessary to provide the security and safety in that home from financial security to proximal security to physical, physical security. There needs to be a place where when you're present or when you're in, they are in an environment you created, they know they're safe. They know the kids are safe. It doesn't mean that there won't be tight times financially. What it means is she's got to know that you're out there on your grind trying to make sure everything is okay. And ladies, when he's out there on his grind, don't be the thorn in his side. He needs your he needs you to tilt it up and, and encourage him. Uh, whisper in his ear. Let him know you believe in him. Does a person need somebody to say they believe in them to do what they need to do? No. There are times that I felt nobody believed in me and I drove and I pushed myself. But I guarantee you the last thing I want is to come home to a place I call home and have the people in there not believe in me. So, yeah, it changes. I'm telling you that the average man who has a good heart. And I'm going to tell you, there are a bunch of black men out there that have good hearts. The average man that has a good heart will walk through fire for a woman that is willing to provide him with the things that he needs. And it's not the things you think. 
yes we have we're visual so physical attraction will get you in the door but it won't keep you in there the door won't even close all the way if that's all you have you have to be able to understand my passion you have to be able to um, connect with my vision uh, and I you I need to look at what you do and who you are and see how I plug in because it's not just about what you do for me how am I going to make your life better and if I can't see how I'm going to make your life better this isn't a place for me it's either not a good fit or maybe it's some things I need to work on myself but I need to see how I am going to add to you and those are the things but when we are focused on trying to convince one another I'm, I'm i'm more important in this relationship than you that's competitiveness within the relationship there can be no collaboration where there's competitiveness competition and collaboration are not inclusive As a matter of fact they're mutually exclusive you cannot be in competition with your mate this isn't i need to show you i'm more important i need to show you that i have more value no it's about me recognizing all the value in you and you recognizing the value in me understanding that together we can build something that is extraordinary the true nature of this whole idea about marriage is the sinking of masculine energy and feminine energy to create synergy synergy is the simply the sinking of energies that cr produces a force greater than the individual entities of energy of energy life force themselves so by herself she can do some extraordinary things by herself she can attack a bunch of things by herself she can literally take on life but put her with someone else who has the same mindset the same work ethic the same drive the same vision see he's a more visionary person she's more spiritually in tune so she works with discernment those things need to merge and sync so they are flowing in direct correspondence with one another because together they'll do things that neither individually can do there's a reason for this we have allowed society to convince us that we don't need one another that we are the the enemies of each other that you are the worst thing that ever happened to me i if i never see another woman if i i can't stand black men and all this stuff that is flowing is literally pushed through propaganda and structured media data that gives you the idea that there are no good men there are no good women there's nobody to connect with so everybody's the enemy and everybody is to blame for how i feel and what i've been through when the truth of the matter is only the person who did it to you is responsible and you've got to gain if you got to understand that in order to do better you've got to be better yourself so instead of sitting up carrying the anger and the frustration you need to sit up and do the healing because it's in doing the healing that you can recognize the beauty and the power and the force in the life of someone else who can connect with you but to sit up and look at this when there's so many things going wrong in our community do you know there's no more affordable housing in america that corporate and uh or private equity firms uh, are buying up all the affordable housing. So anything under $200,000 is gone. And like in Texas, that was a lot because Texas has extremely affordable housing prices in comparison to places like California and some other places. And you could, you could get 1,800, 1,900, 2,100 square feet for under, under 200,000 easy. Now you can't get anything in that in that all that stuff now has been purchased by private equity and it's become rental property so anybody in that price range can only rent now so you either renting from uh an apartment complex a multifamily dwelling or you renting from a single family dwelling private equity property 
but you can't get into the ownership game. That's a problem when you're trying to launch your wealth building process. Uh, I talk about all the things that we do have at our disposal, the things we can do. Uh, but what we need to be aware of is what does that mean the long term? This isn't just simply uh, a power move by private equity. This is a governmental, political, geopolitical uh, exercise uh, in a push for one world uh, government, a one world uh, rule. Uh, sometimes in, in the old days referred to as the New World Order, uh, you, you got to look at pr the uh, global banks and what they control. And what does that mean for you? You should be able to ask those questions. And I've shared countless times those things, but it's not sensational. It doesn't have any celebrity gossip attached to it. And so it's not viewed uh, with frequency. And my thing is, I'm not here to be... Uh, validated by views, but it tells me what my people are doing. And it's not the only place where I evaluate. I evaluate posts of other people. I evaluate what's hot on every particular platform, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, uh, TikTok, Facebook. Uh, I, I, I evaluate. I look at what our people are looking at and our people are so easily distracted with the things that have no ability to change the direction of what's going on in our world to give our youth and our children uh, a better chance. We are people who consistently talk about our children being our future, and yet we won't consistently and committedly invest in them. I, I look and in, 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 in over the years, I have been implacable in my push uh, to be a voice for our sisters, for our men, and for our children. Uh, I have created multitudinous avenues to in betterment by way of uh, programs that come from uh, the research, the De program development. I've worked directly in communities. I've gone to war with school districts. I've gone to war, war with police departments. Um, I've gone to war with politicians. Um, and I will continue to speak up. I will continue to stand up. I will continue to conduct research and provide options. But what I'm trying to tell you is that based on what I see, our focus is off. Our fixation on the sensational, our fixation on the superficial, our fixation on the bag and the body. And what I mean by that is we've convinced because we've confided commodified black men we convince them that getting the bag is all that's matter so they have poor character they have poor manners they have poor uh concern and regard for our women because they got the bag and the bag means i can do what i want to do and then the women have been told in order to get the guy with the bag you've got to be a 10 a 9 or a 10 so they are out getting the body most of the time in the most unhealthiest of ways. And so now you've got the entire culture of the bag and the body and nobody's developing, nobody's growing, nobody's building, nobody's coming together. We're making babies and moving to the next one and making babies. And I tell you, I am not um, pure in, in, in all of this. I've had my own mistakes. Uh, but what I'm trying to tell you is you can't sit up and say, well, it is what it is. You've got to find a way to make a difference. You've got to find a way to come together and say, we we're moving in a different direction. The problem is when you look at it, truly, there's no real agenda and that there's no agenda. There's no direction. There's no collective idea. There's no collective identity. There's just a bunch of people worried about self. We'll get upset about something, cop will do something to a black man or a woman or somebody will do something and we'll get upset about it and we'll rally until we get tired 
then we go back to the status quo because that's what we know. We don't have anything of our own. We don't have an agenda. We don't have protocols. Protocols would tell us how to be, respond to different things that we are unhappy with. We wouldn't have to respond from our emotion. We would respond from our trained protocols. This is what we do when this happens. This is how we behave. This is the next step and the next step and the next step and the next step. And these protocols govern the movement so we don't have to sit up and think we simply respond we have none of that because we won't sit down we'll we, we'll sit up and we'll have we have all these brilliant minds but see all these brilliant minds want uh popularity and fame and they want to be recognized as the one and so everybody's taking shots at everybody everybody's beefing with everybody everybody is refusing to work with the other person why i don't want them to get more uh, clout than I got. I don't want them to get more press than I got. I don't want them to become bigger than me. I could care less about who wins in, in, in that thing. You know, get your popularity on. Get your thing. What I care about is collective organized movement towards something that we can let, rest our hats on and we can provide for our children, uh, our, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren and their children and grandchildren so that we aren't in the same place or worse 50, 75, 100 years from now. I said this before, then I'll be done. I said this before that in order for us to truly progress as a people to truly experience liberation and empowerment as a race of people, we are going to have to have men and women, but uh, definitely men who are really willing to plant seeds that we probably will not live long enough to see come to fruition. There's no instant gratification. There's no pat on the back and plaques for what we need to do. We need to pour into this 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 upcoming gener generation and plant the seeds of power in them nurture it protect it cultivate it and by the time they become full grown we may not be here anymore definitely at my age i may not be here in 30 years i'm hoping i'll still be here but i may not be here in 30 years but i still have to plant that seed i got to put it in these kids that are coming up so that they when full grown are prepared to go out and do the things that are absolutely necessary for them to win. We we do a lot of showboating. We do a lot of stuff and it look good. This flash and a lot of us are making pretty good money doing it, but we're not blessing the masses. We're not empowering the masses. Well, the masses are out arguing over who's the catch. Nobody ever thought to say, well, at least they somebody got caught because they're in a marriage. Now, I, and I'm really hoping it works. The thing is, the numbers say it's a 50-50 chance, but I think they got on a good start. They got healing. They work together to get better as people become whole before they got married. I think that's pretty wise for young people. Um, but what I will tell you is this, we've got a lot of growing up as a people to do. We've got to get away from the need to be entertained, the escapism that's so prevalent in our behavior. We've got to get away from it. Look, I just had to talk about it. Uh, I know it's, you know, probably a lot of rambling going on in there somewhere. Uh, but I hope that there are some jewels that you can take away from this. We've got work to do. Um, look in the description box if you want to show some love and support us. Look in the description box if you want to catch the titles of some of my uh, re prevalent and relevant books. Uh, obviously, all of them are listed. Uh, I'm at 27 published full-length books. I will drop two more in the coming year. Uh, but right now, I think that um, there's enough to be read and studied and understood for the moment. So on that note, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. You guys have an unbelievable remainder of your day. I'm out. Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special 
announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.